Hi everyone, this is Daniel and today I'm trying to walk you through the installation process of Bloodhound on a Windows system. In my case, this is a Commando VM in a virtual machine. Um, I lately several times came across some problems while installing the uh, Neo4j components especially, so I took some time to make some updates to the official installation documentation. The first thing I added was a link to the Microsoft OpenJDK 11 implementation. This, uh, in contrast to the Oracle version, doesn't uh, <laughs> force you to, to log in or create an account or something like that. You can just download it and install it. So. I already stumbled upon this several times for the Oracle version and then Googled around finding OpenJDK implementation that would just let me download it without creating an account. And in the end, I found that Microsoft had its own implementation. So if you go there and follow the link, I directly link this OpenJDK 11. Make sure to not go with another version because this will interfere with the uh, installation of the Neo4j components. I opted to go with the uh, x64 MSI installer, which I already downloaded here. Just simply started. The only thing that you want to make sure is that you let it set the Java home variable. Uh, if you don't select it or don't have it because you run some other setups that don't support these options, you can set it manually afterwards. So I also provided the steps to check the settings afterwards. You can just simply do it with a run dll32 command or you can search for environment variables like this will give go or direct you to the to the same settings and the only thing that you want to make sure is that you have these java home uh, system variables set and it's pointing to your jdk 11 uh, folder in case of the Commando VM or maybe your system, you most likely have an older version installed and that might interfere with setting these Java home variables. So make sure it's pointing to exactly the JDK 11 version we just downloaded and the next step should be able to go successfully. So. The next thing we want to do is download the Neo4j Community Edition server in the version 4.x in the newest version, to say the least. Neo4j 4, according to the Bloodhound guy, suffers from some performance issues. Don't know if this still is the case, but I opted to go with the version 4 as well. So if you follow the link to the Neo4j webpage, just make sure to not download the enterprise server or the desktop application. Make sure to not go with version 5, but with version 4. And for Windows, we only have the option to download the zip file containing all the stuff we need. <coughs> I just downloaded this as well. Created a dedicated folder Bloodhound under the C disk and extracted it. And what you want to do is, as administrator, go into the bin folder and then run the neo4j bot file with the install minus service switch. So if everything is okay for the system, this goes through with no problem. And in this case, we have some problems with environment variables and this is the next step I stumbled upon, not directly this error message, but two other messages we go through just in a minute. Um, let's just check the environment variables again. Okay, I think it's not feeling comfy. 
with the hyphens. Okay, okay. Let's give it another try. For sure. Environment variables are session specific, so we just need to run stuff again. New 4J bot and star minus service. So in this case, everything went fine. Neo4j service installed, just as it's referring it in the documentation. What I ran across were errors like these here. So it was telling me like it, it couldn't find the prancer file for interacting with uh, Windows subsystem service, or it said it, uh, couldn't find the Neo4j common startup in this Java class, stuff like that. And this almost always was solved by setting these two environment variables, the ones we just saw. Just go through them again. Sometimes for me, it was needed, sometimes it wasn't. But in any case, when I stumbled across these errors, uh, setting Neo4j conf and Neo4j home system variables and pointing them to the folder, to the root folder of the Neo4j um, installation folder, so to say, um, the errors were gone and I could proceed installing these services. So, the last thing we want to do is, at least I like to do it like that. According to the doc, we are, um, or they are starting it manually. I like to go there in these services. I think it's set to run automatically per default, but let's give it a quick check. Okay, it is set to automatic. So on the next reboot of the system, it should already be started. So if this is saying running, this is already a good sign. The next thing we want to do is go to the Neo4j web console and change the default username and password of Neo4j, Neo4j to something else. Otherwise the application and Bloodhound will complain. Um, that the password needs to be set to something different. So what do we have here? Here for J. Console will always give you some valuable information about what's going on, why things can't be started, stuff like that. Oh, so Neo4j is already running. 7474 would be the port. Somewhat laggy. And I honestly don't see that port running.
this is not looking that bad. Okay, now it started. I think it's somewhat laggy due to me recording at the same time, so it shouldn't be a problem when you do it and follow along. Yeah, now it's getting really unresponsive for some odd reason. So default username, Neo4j, default password, Neo4j. Don't want to save this because we are security people, right? So give it a new password. And that should be it for the initial Neo4j setup. And the last thing is we go to the official Bloodhound GitHub repo, go to the latest releases, download the zip file. In this case, we are going for the x64 version of Bloodhound. Already have done that as well. Extracted it here. Then we can start Bloodhound. It will automatically search for the Neo4j server and connect to it just need to give it credentials in this case already saved from my side and there we go fresh installed bloodhound 4.2.0 with the newest neo4j community edition server and <laughs> an open jdk version which you can download and don't need to have an account or sign into stuff Okay, guys, that's it for today. Hope you learned something. Hope it helps someone. Take care.